Hi everybody, welcome to How Fine. I am Gregory Zarian. So the holidays are here and they are upon us. Have you done your shopping? Have you gotten ready for your family to come on in and spend time and energy and effort with you? Uh, are you running out of control? Have you quit going to the gym? Are you not drinking as much water? Are you stressed? Okay, together let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. One thing that happens during the holidays is we forget to breathe and we forget about self-care. Do not forget what we talk about here. Eight to 10 glasses minimal of water a day. Get up and walk outside, do your exercises, stretch, and just take care of you. Three deep breaths can change the situation. Now with the holidays being here, we are going a little bit faster, we are moving, we are running, we are going a lot more crazy than we normally do. That means we may get hurt, we may fall, we may trip, we may actually knock out our back, hurt our spine, knock out our neck. Do you or someone you love suffer from back neck problems? So joining us from Adventist South Glendale is Dr. Jared Ament. And the topic is all about artificial disc motion preserving spine surgery. How are you, doctor? I'm well, thank you for having me. It's your first time here. It is. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so in the, in the intro, we talked about people just going crazy during the holidays. Uh, and since your specialty is the back, what is, first and foremost, what is your thought about us preserving our back hair during the holiday season? I think everything you mentioned in, in sort of the preamble is, is accurate, taking, taking a deep breath. I think we all run around crazily every day, even during the holidays. We're looking down at our cell phones, actually been shown in some medical literature to cause neck strain because we're all walking around with our heads down constantly. Uh, I think people are getting into accidents, they're being reckless, and I think it's, it's important to try and preserve what we have because anytime you do surgery, um, it's not always that easy to put things back in place, as perfect as they once were. Before we dive into our first break, is there a right way to hold your cell phone? <laughs> well, I, I think that when you are not in motion, holding it at eye's length is probably a good uh, general piece of advice. So eyes length and not in motion means not when you're driving and not when you're walking, bumping into people like me on the street. So it's, you're actually at a stop or at your house and you're holding it right here. Correct. So you're not holding your neck down. Is there a proper way to hold it if you have to look down or? Not really. Most of the, there's, there's only a little bit of recent literature on that, but the, what it does suggest is that the constant time that we are flexing, we're in extreme flexion with the neck, looking down at things, cell phone being the most common one, tablets as well, um, has resulted in prolonged uh, strain on the neck that we're just not used to and nor were we equipped to. Our bodies were designed with the pelvis and everything to be upright. We're no longer animals, we're not on all fours, we're upright and the neck is designed to actually have what's called lordosis. It's a curvature, and it's supposed to keep you upright, not be down here. So here's my Christmas invitation to you. Put your phone down, sit upright, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarian. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And to you and your family may be a happy, healthy one. So the entire conversation today is all about your back. It's all about how to sit properly. It's all about when to put the phone down. Do not text and drive. Do not walk down the street and bump into somebody. Most accidents happen when you're not paying attention. And also for all of you that now live with the pods, if you're driving, it's not safe because you can't hear what's going, going on. Our mission here at Healthline is to make you as healthy and aware as possible. So put down the phone, put down the iPad, get back into living your life and participating with everything going on out here. And it's not so much about here, because if you spend all your time doing this, you're gonna end up in the hands of our guest. Joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is Dr. Jared Ament, neurosurgeon. And the topic today is all about artificial disc motion, preserving spine surgery. Uh, doctor, before we uh, talk about your specialty and um, recently being published and all the great things we were talking about before the show. Please share with us some of your medical history. Sure, not my personal medical history, but. No, but uh, you're, you're a. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> so my background, I was actually born and raised in Toronto, Canada. Went to Yay, Canada. <laughs> went to college uh, up there at University of Toronto. 
uh, went south for medical school, spent time at the Medical School for International Health, which is a joint collaborative between Columbia, New York, and uh, Ben Gurion in Israel, and lived in Israel and overseas in Africa and South America for some time after that. That must have been exciting. It was an exceptionally interesting time, absolutely. I love that. Learned a lot. And uh, came back and uh, spent time, m many, many years actually, in Boston, was a postdoc fellow, and did a master's degree at Harvard, focusing on cost effectiveness and public health. Then did uh, residency training at University of California Davis and fellowship at Cedar Sinai and ended up in LA. So then, Doctor, what landed you then at Adventist Health Glendale? Well, uh, you know, it was it would have to be the warmth, the community feeling. Oh, uh, I, I love that. I, I interviewed a lot all over the place, not even just the state of California, but the country, and uh, the community uh, was exceptional. Really stood out. My father was part of the hospital for a very, very long time, and that was so important to him because his words were, when I walk into a hospital, I need to feel safe and accepted and feel like they can do everything and anything for me. So I, I love that. Uh, what got you into your specialty then? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I, my parents and grandparents used to say that they would find me uh, as a young boy sitting up at night late, later than I probably should have been, working on models of the brain and the spine at my desk for hours on end and they couldn't take me away from it. I, I don't know. It was a constant fascination with neurophysiology and what we could and could not do to sort of fix problems in the brain and the spine. What is the one thing about the back, before we dive into your specialty, mm -hmm. that we should know that we don't really think about? It is much more complex than people realize. You know, it, it, if you think about the knee or the elbow, it's a single joint. You know, the spine has, you know, so many different moving parts at every single level. Uh, you know, there's at least uh, three moving parts per level at 33 separate levels. I mean, it's really, it, it's, it's verging on uh, unfathomable how many things can go wrong in one part or different parts of the spine. There's the front, there's the back, there's the middle, there's a spinal cord that's protected. So the complexity, how the angles and the mathematics work with respect to the biomechanics, because the spine is keeping us upright and holding us, allowing us to walk, allowing us to function. There are a lot of things to take into account every time you approach the spine in surgery. It's not just looking at a disc or some arthritis. It's, it's a much more of a global picture. Do you feel that we treat our backs well? We, as a human, as a the race. We as in, yeah, as in yes. No, as a race, we are extremely abusive to our spines. I mean, it's, it, we weren't meant to be doing the things that we were doing. Now we are evolving, so, sure. but we are extremely hard on the spine. Now the spine is adapted. It's incredibly versatile in what it can accomplish and how it keeps us upright. But as we get older and we live longer and we are healthier, you can see how the spine really wasn't designed to do the things that we're doing because we degenerate more and more and more as we get older and people are having to deal with the consequences of that. And that's why people come to you because you can basically repair and rebuild our spines, both, Sometimes. So to speak. Sometimes. Sometimes. More Dr. Amit when we come back, don't go away. <music> Welcome back. The topic today is all about motion preserving spine surgery. Joining us from Adventist Health is Dr. Jared Ament. Uh, so what is motion preserving spine surgery? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I get asked that a lot even in the office from patients because it's a buzzword. Um, it, it has been the latest alternative in some select cases to fusion. Now fusion, spinal fusions... Is Which we've heard about a long time. It's like... It is, it's we've heard about, I mean, it's been what we've been doing for decades. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it's sort of in the pejorative sense now because it, it really has a negative connotation. Uh, it, and that's not unfair in some cases because people who get a spinal fusion often, if they live long enough, need another one. Sure. Used to, the saying was a fusion begets a fusion begets a fusion. And that's because the biomechanics of the spine change. When you fuse a segment, which is sometimes the right thing to do for patients, especially in trauma, depending on your age, if you're older. Um, and depending on what's happened to you. And depending on what's happened. There could be <laughs> frank instability. There's a lot of reasons why fusion is the right choice. Sure. But when you fuse a segment of the spine, 
as you can imagine, the segments above it and segments below it are under more stress because they're now compensating for a segment that's fused together, that's no longer moving. The whole biomechanics of your spine changes. The idea of motion preserving spine surgery or artificial disc technology is instead of putting a spacer in that disc space and fusing bone to bone, we put a spacer in that is l an actual artificial disc that replicates. Makes it more pliable, gives it, it more. replicate what your discs do. It's like a shock absorber with ranges of diff certain degrees of motion in every sort of angle and then every disc is a little bit different in how they're designed. But the idea is to replicate what your disc is doing. So we can take away the stenosis, the pressure on the spine. If there's a collapsed disc and you're bone on bone friction, okay. we can increase that disc space. But instead of fusing the segments, which is all we had before, now we can do all of that. We can decompress, we can take the pressure off the spine and the nerve roots. We can increase the disc space, but not fuse and put in a device that acts like your normal disc and allows there to be motion. Why is that important? Because the level <laughs> above and below, the level above and below are now responding to that surgical site closer to what your normal anatomy is like because it's moving. Instead like, of it being stuck. And we never correct. think about it when somebody thinks of when I, as I said to you, I had major shoulder surgery mm -hmm. and I know that everything had to be repaired, so to speak. And it's not so much that everything was surgically operated on, but I had to get my, my scapula, my, my deltoid, my back, my shoulders, my ribs, everything moving so that the repair worked. So imagine if, imagine if they couldn't do that and they fused it. You'd feel better, the pain would go away. But I'd be stuck. But you'd be stuck, exactly. Oh, I, okay, so you're basically unstuck, unstucking yeah, people, yeah. so we're, to speak. We're trying to make you feel better, whatever the disease or the pathology is, but doing it in a way that doesn't create a fusion, doesn't stick you, doesn't make you, you know, unfortunately succumb to the after effects, the sequelae of a fusion, which downstream effects could be degeneration and more accelerated degeneration in the future. Which then you would have to go back and then refuse. The levels because above, levels below, we don't know. But it, it, we, there is actually good data, to, there is good data, very good data, that shows that the biomechanic stresses on the disc spaces, especially in the neck, on the disc spaces of the neck above and below, can go up, every time you fuse a segment, go up by about 17%. And that varies depending on the studies, but it, it is three to four times more than if that segment was mobile. Wow. So then who is, who is a candidate for this procedure then? Yeah, it's... The and it's, it's the entire neck, as we were talking earlier, there's three parts of the neck. Um, the cervical, the thorac, the th cervical... Thoracic? The, no, dang yeah. it, cervical, <laughs> thoracic, lumbar. Yeah, so the, uh, the spine is composed of cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and then also there's a sacrum. Um, in terms of artificial disc technology, yes. it's only currently available for the cervical spine and the lumbar spine. Okay. And the FDA has approved uh, two levels for the cervical spine, uh, only one level for the lumbar spine. Um, we have done things that are not FDA approved because that's within our purview. We sure. Um, and have ex you know very much tried to give patients more movement where necessary. But in general, um, patients who are healthier, want to be active, younger, who have bad degenerative disease for whatever reason, Usually a disc is either flattened or is herniated and is pushing on, on important it structures. It could also be hereditary. It absolutely could be hereditary. Uh, those are p potential candidates uh, for an artificial disc, especially if they would have otherwise been fused. Got it. Some people just need a little microdiscectomy, which means you just take the little disc out that's, that's pushing on the nerve and you're done. Don't fuse, don't do anything. That's still a good surgery in of itself. It's for, quick. For what it is. For what it is. But if it's a patient, a young patient who has bad disease for whatever reason. So when you say young, give me, give me let me just throw out there. Uh, well, the, uh, the FDA studies, the randomized control studies that looked at these was anywhere between 18 and 69 or 70. Oh, that's fantastic, okay, great. So it's approved for those age groups, but you really need to take the whole patient into account. But the reason why age matters, remember I explained how the adjacent segment, the next level, if you fuse the level, yes. is under more stress? Yes. That stress, obviously is more important the longer it's under stress, the longer it's there. So if you're young, if you're 30 or 40 years old, and you would get a fusion otherwise, think about the 30 or 40 or 50 years of stress sure. that the next segments are under. Sure. So the longer you have to live, the more likely you're gonna need another surgery if you got a fusion. 
So the whole idea is if you were to put an artificial disk in, the data suggests, it's even better at two levels actually, the data suggests probably a five-fold decrease in adjacent segment disease over 10 years. Now that's significant. Though so adjacent segment disease may or may not result in surgery, but if you have a five-fold decrease in those stresses and the adjacent segment disease, 10, 20, 30 years, you'll see a decrease in the amount of reoperations de being done and needed. Which that also means is you're giving us more time. More Dr. Amit when we come back, don't go away. Welcome back to Healthline. I'm Gregory Zarin. Did you know that Adventist Health Glendale has been recognized by U.S. News and World Report as one of the best hospitals for 2018-2019, ranking 15 out of 103 hospitals in Los Angeles and 28 out of the 414 hospitals in California. Adventist Health Glendale recently received its 10th, I'll say it again, recently, re recently received its 10th A grade in a row for patient safety from the LeapFrog Group. It's a pleasure to be part of your history and your story. And as doctor, our guest, Dr. Amen said, your warmth. Congratulations, everyone at Adventist Health Glendale. Joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is neurosurgeon, Dr. Jared Ament. Uh, doctor, so in regards to the procedure that we're talking about, there must be skeptics that don't believe and again, just so I can quote, motion preserving spine surgery. Because people must be old school and be like, you're going to fuse it and that's all. Yeah, I, there absolutely are. I mean, I remember when I was interviewing and I've done a lot of academic research work and have been published in, in pretty prestigious journals uh, looking at artificial discs. And I would promote th that work. And when I was interviewing, looking for people to at least recognize that. And I was actually uh, met with some skepticism. People would say, well, we've done fusion for four decades or five decades. So the success rate is 95%. Why would we do anything else? In, in some instances, fusion was a great option. Sure. It still is a great option in some cases. But as we've learned, and there, I it's actually rather indisputable now. Th there are multiple, not one, multiple FDA-run randomized control trials, national, not just at Adventist, all over, all over the country and internationally, that have looked at artificial disc technology. And these are extremely stringent, very controlled trials. Uh, they are company sponsored, which is why people think that, that you know, oh, there's skeptics, you know, the company's involved. But these are extremely, mo they're monitored by the FDA. They are uh, well thought out, well designed, and, and, and scrutinized in the literature. We have more data on artificial disc technology in neurosurgery, in my field, than probably anything we do, That's than fantastic. brain tumors and aneurysms, than anything we do. The data is the strongest, we call it level one data. It is indisputable that in the right patients, motion preserving surgery, spine surgery is superior. They're used to the original study said non-inferior, so almost equivalent, right? Sure. Non-inferior to fusion. The studies, especially the studies looking at two levels in the, in the cervical spine, were superior. There was superiority to fusion in the right patient population. So it, it is a, not everyone is a candidate. You have to go to a good surgeon who can evaluate you. But as long as they have motion preserving artificial technology in their armamentarium, they feel comfortable with that procedure, then they should be able to make that determination if you're a good candidate. But it, it, it behooves the patient to ask. To ask as many questions as possible. Absolutely. And when you say good candidate one more time, what, what is a good candidate? Yeah, I, I'm generalizing, but I, it is usually the younger, healthier, active patient who has a lot of life to live because the longer you have to live, the longer a fusion can fail or cause problems at the adjacent levels, at the next levels in the sure. spine, which is what artificial discs are better at preserving. So younger, it, it could be very young, 20s, 30s, and just have congenital problems or traumas and injuries. Did but anybody the, before that? I mean, the, this trial only looked at Abbott's, okay. 18 and on. That okay. was, that was, those were all the trials, and that's just sort of legality. We don't look at sure. this stuff in pediatrics. Um, and, you know, it, it is, it, I've done artificial disc surgery in 70-year-olds that exceeded the trial limitation 69 because this, today, the 70-year-old looks like they're in their 50s. 50s. He's, a, he's an Olympic swimmer who's in better shape than I'm in. Maybe not you, but better shape than I'm in. And he has a lot of good quality life to, left li to live to live an active life and you know what insurance approved it no one disputed it we did the surgery left the hospital post-operative day one wow and is doing great 
Speaking of that, then what is recovery like? Yeah, everyone's different. And if you, do, if you do one level versus two levels, it, it changes if it's in the cervical spine or the neck versus the lower lumbar spine. Recovery is different. Um, some cases, honestly, I will do a single level cervical at outpatient, same day procedure. They go home the same day. A couple hours after surgery, make sure everything's okay, they go home, have had no issues. It's well documented that that's relatively safe to do <laughs> across the country. Most people stay in the hospital a day, okay. sometimes two. Um, Just depending on where they're at after the procedure. Correct. And, and also where they were going into the procedure, Got depending it. on comorbidities and how they were are and their overall health was. But they're up walking immediately, physical therapy. If they had weakness before, working to gain that strength back. But all in all, I've yet, you know, knock on wood, had to take one out or, or, or remove one. People come and see me one or two weeks after surgery in the office just to make sure the wound is healing okay. And then again, in three months, we get what's called flexion extension x-rays where they're moving. There's a whole point is I don't want these discs to fuse. I want sure. there to be motion. motion. And so at three months, we've had very successful results. and Everyone's happy. I will say that people heal faster from an artificial disc than a fusion because a fusion surgery, you need the bones to fuse. Absolutely. And that on average can take about six months. So you don't have to wear a collar. You don't have to be in a brace. People are very happy. They go back to work. They go back to active work and activities faster. Final thoughts in regards to our back and back health. Be aware. I think it's extremely important to be cognizant of posture, of what we're doing as our lives get busier. You know, the cell phone thing that we mentioned at the beginning of, of this production, I think, is important. But it's not just the cell phone. It's everything that we're doing. It's, it's easier just to hunch. It's easier to sit in the chair. It's, you know, be aware that these things matter. And if you don't think it matters now, it may catch up to you later on. Dr. I mean, it was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you much. for having me. And one point circling back that you were talking about it's just about being healthy. You know, when you go in, if somebody's, if you say to somebody, you're going to have this procedure, it doesn't mean wait for the month. It means being as proactive and prehabilitating yourself. So you go in stronger, you heal. I don't want to say quicker, but you heal stronger. No, you do. I agree with you. Going in healthier, you come out healthier. Shoulder surgery. I spent a year prehabbing, not knowing what was wrong. I am two to three months ahead of the average person because I came out of it stronger. Completely agree. There you have it. It has been an awesome year with you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for spending time with us. As you know, you can always find us on social media, on Facebook at capital A-H Glendale, on LinkedIn, Adventist Health, and also on the website, AdventistHealthGlendale.org. Our mission here is to make you as to give you as much information as we can to make you as happy and as healthy as possible. With the holidays being here, one thing you have to remember, the two things you have that are the safest part are your feet. If you are dealing with an addiction, if you are not feeling safe, if you don't wanna be where you're at, your feet can take you away from anything doesn't make you feel happy, safe, and healthy. Remember the most important conversation you're gonna have is about you and your health. So have one right now. Have a great holiday. Merry Christmas. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you for joining us.